Hello friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide and we are on November 1st, 2023. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well. Earthquakes, look at the volcanic weather and as well space weather and world weather. Starting out here, always looking at the last 48 hours on our sun as we did have quite the event there. If you notice in the bottom part there of the sun, we did have a large plasma filament that ripped away from the sun and as well an M-class solar flare right beside it. So active day on the sun, both kind of in an earth direction, but southward. So set to fly underneath earth in the next couple days. Having a look here, the last 48 hours incoming and outgoing. As we did have a CME that erupted on backside north that shot away on the north side of our sun and as well a CME projected from that plasma filament. Having a look at multi-spectrum here, the last 48 hours of events, I'd say active couple M-class solar flares and as well we've got yet another coronal hole getting ready for an Earth-facing party. 171 angstroms here, this is where we can see an active, I believe, five sunspot regions right now and two of them have produced m-class solar flares one of them earth facing direction and it was more southern region sunspot so six six sunspots right now and two of them are highly visible here at another light one of them right here interacting with each other and as well another one cresting in but that's going to be a big one Sometimes when these sunspot regions are very organized, they create a black hole there, pretty much on the sun. That's what it looks like to us. But yeah, two M-class solar flares the last two, uh, 48 hours showing here current space weather conditions are one radio blackout impacts expected. Solar winds are now coming in at 456 kilometers per second. A little bit down from the last few days as they were up and over 500 kilometers per second. Solar X-ray uh, flex <laughs> showing there the two M-class solar flares and as well long duration C-class solar flares. KP index is at a two or three right now. Space Weather Prediction Center here with their space pr uh, prediction spiral showing the CME taking off from our sun. That is a coronal mass ejection. And it looks like it's coming at Earth, but it's really going to be going underneath as this was in a uh, southward direction. Iswa showing the same thing here. Large CME taking off outgoing direction. But the M-class flares, that's why we are under the R1 radio blackout impacts. Watches are in effect. Having a look at LASCO 2, the last 48 hours, this is where we can really see all of the cosmic energy leaving the sun. See me there taking off from the north and then boom, boom from the west and the south. Some pretty sizable CMEs. We're just going to back that up and have another look at it. And an even closer look at it will slow it down a bit. Wow, that was an active west side shot. And as well from the south. Now let's get to earthquakes the past 24 hours as we're still seeing rumblers, large ones. As I said, it was not over and I was expecting more. Timor region, Indonesia reporting a 6.1 earthquake today. Very active region for volcanoes all throughout there. And as well, look at this straight east over to the Fiji Islands. 5.1, pretty deep, over 400 kilometer depth and as well southward towards the Kermadec Islands, creeping even closer towards New Zealand. Lots of activity, Philippines Plate and northward up into Japan, Marianas Trench with the 4.9, the islands, Japan seeing the 4.8 and 4.9 north and south, Port Blair, India, 94 kilometer depth, 5.1 earthquake there, India Plate still under a lot of stress and has been for the past week. Same with Africa, South Sudan today reporting a 4.8, well, yesterday. 
South Sandwich Islands, 5.0 earthquake there. And as well, uh, here, 4.6, just South Mid-Atlantic. Southern Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Now, all of a sudden, South America is quiet after that 6.5 yesterday in Chile. And Guatemala gets a 5.1 today. Quiet through the Caribbean plate. A little bit curious as to what is going on through Central America. Something's going to pop here soon. North American plate, pretty quiet, except for that 3.5. Stanley, Idaho, Alaska, increasing minor activity throughout the region. So, heads up. And as well, increasing minor activity through Hawaii. But the West Ring of Fire right now, the West Pacific is still looking like quite a hot spot for another big earthquake. Things are really setting up around the world. Looking at the last seven days for shakers. This is an app you, you can all download yourself and check it out. Or you can subscribe, hit the bell, and don't miss an update here. And thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of the love and support to this channel. I do my best here to give you the daily updates as I can. And I appreciate all of y'all. You guys are amazing in the comment sections. Without you, there is no do. So thank you so much for the most loving and the best community on YouTube. This is the last seven days, everybody. A little look at the Southern Hemisphere. And a little bit of the Northern Hemisphere. As we're going through some great changes together here. I'm so grateful to have you all. I'm grateful for every living moment. Grateful for every day. And thank you for inviting me into your living room today. But heads up, straight across the West Coast, because something's going to give. All right, so let's get to an SO2 forecast. This is all brought to you by our volcanoes around the world. Quite a few eruptions through Kamchatka, eastern Russia, sending a large plume of SO2 here across the Aleutian Islands, and then forecasted here for the next three days to swoop into the rain train that is heading towards BC. Having a look here over the rest of the world. Hot spots through Central Africa. A couple active volcanoes there. And as well notable there, Indonesia. Lots of SO2 coming out of the all of the active volcanoes through the region. And South America. And as well, Fiji. New Zealand, Australia. Aoba has, sure has been really busy this year. And that is just west of New Caledonia. Let's get to world weather here. Overlooking North America, first of all, we've got some cold lows moving across eastern Canada. It's going to sweep some snow up to 75 centimeters in the long-range forecast in some regions. And then Monday into Tuesday... Intense little system here is going to bring some snow to the northern Ontario and some rain for central Ontario. And it could be a pretty windy event. Tightly whip low pressure system there and then watches this big system develops here and eventually heads for Ontario as well. But this one's going to bring some snow for us and as well some pretty extreme weather across central United States. And then watch for a big low. Long-range forecast heading towards California. Overlooking Africa and Europe. Still multiple systems pounding the coastlines there. All across West and Northern Europe. Long-range forecast showing all of these systems joining forces to one large low. And then another intense system there develops and starts pounding Greenland with a lot of heavy snow, which we've been talking about the last few updates. Overlooking Southeast Asia, Australia, and New Zealand. Watch for this low to be affecting most of New Zealand here for the next few days. And as well, an intense system here developing out of China. And then another low heading towards New Zealand, the long range, but no major systems affecting Australia and watching for a couple cyclones, possible de early development for parts of um, northern Australia. So heads up, everybody. This is a look at the Pacific Ocean right now. 
still showing multiple lows, just like the Atlantic Ocean. Things are getting really stirred up here. We're getting ready for winter. Snow is falling for the first time here in on central Ontario yesterday. So Halloween was the first day for 2023. And we can thank these northern polar vortexes. Because that's what gets winter going. Having a look here, upper level winds, northern hemisphere. Quick look around the world. Intense 225 kilometer per hour winds, upper level. Versus the southern hemisphere. And it certainly has changed even since the last update that I did two nights ago. But yeah, we definitely have some cold temperatures right now sweeping across Canada and as well the United States. Snow falling as far south as Colorado. Now let's get to another level. Let's bring it down a couple of levels. Stratosphere. This is where you can really see the jet stream fueling our weather around the world. A lot's going to change right before our eyes over the next five to ten years. And this is why I started this channel. I wanted to talk about it and share my research, share my findings, and document these changes. Now, to talk about changes, we're going to look at the upper level winds here on the flat map, give you a Southern Hemisphere versus Northern Hemisphere look. It is quite intense right now. But let's just go back last year to 2022. At this time last year, November 1st, 2022. Let's go back there. And there's actually a considerable difference since the last... Uh, map since 2022. Considerable difference... In the equatorial winds, considerable difference in the Atlantic current. And all of these changes our Earth has gone through before together. We have gone through this together before and we will again and we will adapt. And these are the changes that we're going through. I want to thank you all for watching tonight. Hope you enjoyed the show. Please share this with your friends and family from around the world. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun. And get your daily due. Bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. Subscribe. Share with your friends and family from across the world.